We can set up hypothesis tests for each of the regression coefficients in our regression equation. In this case, we can test to see whether the slope coefficient, b, is significantly different to zero using a t-test. We are simply going to create a t-statistic by, by forming a ratio between b, the regression coefficient, and sigma sub b, the standard error of the regression coefficient. This is going to be t distributed with n minus one degrees of freedom. The equation for the standard error of the regression slope is quite complicated to compute manually. So instead I'm going to show you how to interpret these statistics as they're provided to you in SPSS output. When we run a regression analysis, in this case between the price of a house and the square foot of the house, or the size of the house, one of the tables of outputs that we get is called the coefficients table. And in this table, we have everything that we need to test to, to interpret the regression equation and determine whether or not the coefficients are significant. So in this case, we have the unstandardized regression coefficients. That's in this column over here. The first row of this column is the constant. I know that we said that this thing is actually equal to A in our notation, but in SPSS, all of the regression coefficients are actually denoted with Bs, but they're Bs with different names. So the first B is the constant, and the second B is the one for the slope between square feet and price. So in this case, we have price equals 145356 plus 230 times square feet. So this square feet is our x variable, and price is our y variable. For each regression coefficient, SPSS is also going to give us the standard error for that regression coefficient. And we can formulate these t-scores by dividing the coefficient by the standard error. So for example, the t-score for the slope is equal to b minus sigma sub b, which is 230 divided by 21, which is roughly, or w w well, I, I dropped some significant digits there, and that's equal to 10.67. So the T statistic is 10.67, which is a very significant statistic. Over here in the significance column, we have the p-value of the T-score. So the probability of making an error by rejecting the null hypothesis, given this T-score, is less than 0, 0.000. So p here is less than 1 in a 1,000. And you know the rhyme, when p is low, the null must go. So the p value is less than 0, 0.000. So if alpha is equal to, say, 5%, p is definitely less than alpha. And therefore, our regression coefficient is significant. SPSS also outputs a model summary table. In this model summary, it's going to report on the R squared of our model. So in this case, the R squared was 70%. It's also going to give us an ANOVA table. And in the ANOVA table, we see the typical breakdown of the sum of s sums of squares. We see the total sum of squares, the residual sum of squares, and the regression sum of squares. You can do the math if you like and see that the R squared of 0 0.708 is equal to the regression sum of squares divided by the total sum of squares. We have about 1.26 over 1.79, which is about equal to 70%. The F statistic is formed using in the normal way, and it's reported over here. And the p-value for the f-statistic is reported in the significance column. 
So in this case, the p is less than one in a thousand, and therefore, the r squared, or the model fit, is significant. We can conclude that prices are truly related to square foot in the population.